daughter, Denise Posas Bokikio. Denise? Thank you. Distinguished guests, honorees, ladies, and gentlemen, my name is Denise Pokikio, and I am one of George Posses' four children, and I'd like to say a few words about my father and also about the greatest generation before I introduce him. Tom Brokaw coined the term the greatest generation in his book, also called The Greatest Generation. In his book, he said, born and raised in an era marked by war and economic depression, these men and women develop values of personal responsibility, duty, honor, and faith. For years I've seen these characteristics in my father, but these words have put meaning, more meaning to his actions. His parents entered the United States from the island of Kos. They entered into Ellis Island. My father was born during the Great Depression and grew up in a very poor neighborhood in New York. He had to work and contribute to his family, and on many occasions he'd tell us he'd shine shoes for a nickel and then have to bring the nickel home to his family. When we were growing up and we asked him for money, he'd always remind us, you know, I had to work for a nickel and you guys are asking for money. And then he'd give us the money, but we'd always get the nickel story first. Only later on did we understand what he was saying. When the United States entered into war in 1941, my father was only 15, but when he reached 17, he enlisted in the Army. He felt a strong sense of duty, pride, and responsibility for being an American, and that included fighting and defending the country he lived in and that he loved. That sense of responsibility and pride still prevail in him today. Tom, Tom Brokaw also writes in this book, they have many stories to tell, stories that in many cases they have never told before because in a deep sense they didn't think what they were doing was special because everybody else was doing it. He continues to state that the greatest generation remains remarkably humble in what they've done. My, my father never spoke about his time in the Army even though it marks a very important and life-changing period for him. I think he felt it was his responsibility and duty to fight, but he didn't need to discuss it with anyone. When we, when we were growing up, he told us he was in the kitchen, so we pictured him overseas in the kitchen. Only recently did we learn about his involvement in the war, and, and we've since, le excuse me, since learned how brave and honorable he was as he fought on the front lines in the Philippines. We were raised as a close-knit family, and my parents provided excellent role models. We watched as my parents worked tirelessly to make our lives better than theirs. My mom worked in a local college and my dad worked as an electrician and later became the owner of an electrical contracting business. These lessons of hard work and dedication that were passed on to us have now been passed on to our children as well. About 15 years ago, my father brought our entire family to Greece. I remember one night sitting at a villa in the island of Syros with my siblings, our spouses, and all our children all sitting around. And he started to tell us the story I'm telling you, that he was brought up poor, we had to heal that nickel story once again, and then how he fought proudly in the World War II. He then also spoke about the importance of the Greek Orthodox Church and how he was proud to be an archon. He finally related to us how, through work and commitment, he saved enough money so we, in turn, could have a better life than him. It's a great story. It's the American dream, and we listen with interest and respect. We have enormous gratitude and love for him, and we're here today in D.C. from all parts of the country to support him and show him that love and gratitude. Finally, one more quote from Tom Brokaw's book. Mr. Brokaw explains that the World War II's generation's perseverance through difficult times is a testament to their extraordinary character. Their remarkable actions during war and peace ultimately made the United States a better place in which to live. We are proud of my father for contributing to this war, to this country in war and peace, to make it a better place to live. His humility, honor and personal responsibility 
are indeed rare qualities, and we are humbled and honored to be associated with this man that has been selected as the recipient of the Washington Ohi Day 2017 Greatest Generation Award. I would like to introduce my father, George Passas. Oh, thank you. Oh wait, let's. Oh wait, I'll move over just a little bit so you can see the. Is that good? Well, I do have to thank Denise. I think I can take all these papers I have and throw them away because she just about said everything I was going to say. But I would like to recognize Mr. Andrew Monitor, Mr. Michael Monitor. I would like to also recon uh, recognize a Father Alex Caluto because he's been with me a long time. He's not here today, but I'm so happy to be with him. My fellow honorees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here and accept this Greatest Generation Award given by the Ohi Foundation at the National, Mar uh, National World War II Memorial for my services as a Greek American who fought in World War II. When the United States entered into the war in 1945, 1941, I was 15 years old. At that time, I almost got ready to go, but uh, I don't think they would have taken me at 15. 1944, I turned 17. I got, I got my mother and father to sign it. I don't think the poor lady and the poor man ever knew what they were signing. But uh, they signed it, and I ended up in the Army. After basic training and two-week vacation, I, I was on my way to the Philippine Islands. During that time on the ship, I had plenty of time to think about, what did I do this for? Where, now where am I going? And what am I doing? I, I was very, very nervous about what I was heading into, what it meant to me. I was only 17 years old. I was assigned to the 41st Infantry Division. It's a, a division like this, a Sunset Division. Sunset Division. I fought on several islands in the Pacific, including, before I say them, I, I really don't even know where these islands were. I mean, uh, they, they take us and they, uh, we have to go and take an island, and I like to understand, what island? What, are, what is this doing to the war? But the island, did you ever hear of Biak? Never heard of Biak. Palawan, Mindanao, I've heard, I'm sure people heard of that, and Hollandia. I remember saying, I never heard of these islands, but it was very, very hot around there and very muggy. Eventually, I was assigned to a ship headed for Hiroshima. We were going to invade Hiroshima. They had told us there'd be approximately 70% casualties on this. Now, this is something I didn't want to hear, but uh, they told us. And of course, a casualty can be someone who's wounded, someone who got, uh, they, they, they caught him. Oh, it's somebody who died. We were told there'd be 70% casualties. When we were at sea, we heard, all of a sudden, we started hearing some Navy ship with their big cannons going. We had no idea what was going on. Finally, they told us the bomb, the A-bomb, dropped on Hiroshima. I couldn't believe it. We were out there. We were close to it. And, uh, but they, they knew what they were doing. We were about 30 miles away. Finally, uh, we stayed on board and troop ship for about three weeks waiting for the OK to go on the island of Hiroshima because of all the radiation that was on there. When we finally got on the island, it was not a pleasant experience. Uh, you, you wouldn't want to see what was on there. I mean, there was something that even I, I felt very bad about looking at. Finally, the war was over. My mission was accomplished. I had a responsibility to be there. I did what I had to, and I was glad to be home. In 
1953, I married my wife, Evelyn Lamberton, who we were married for 64 years. Had a wonderful life together. She passed away December 24th, 2016. We had a wonderful family, three girls, one boy, and I have nine grandchildren. Don't ask me their names, I probably don't even know them. <laughs> I've been a member of St. Paul's Cathedral in Garden City in New York. I've served as president in 1982 and remained active in the church for many years. 1984, I received the honor of becoming an archon, which is very, very important to me. Very important to me. At that, at one time, I was a uh, a senator for New York for the archons. One other thing I'd like to say: I'm so proud of the Yorkie Day, which commemorates the anniversary of former military general and prime minister Ioannis Metaxas who said Orchi to the ultimatum. They made him an ultimatum but from Benito Mussolini. He made the, uh, I can't believe that, made that, when he said Orchi, I was ready to go to war for him too. I really was. That was wonderful then. I would like to thank Andrew Monitors, Michael Monitors. I would also again like to thank Father Alex Kaluchos, for he is my spiritual father and has helped me many times in the hour of need. I would like to thank all the honored guests and ladies and gentlemen who attended this special occasion. And I fi finally, I would like to thank all my children, they're all here, and all my grandchildren, and they're all here, who have attended this cemetery, this ceremony, not cemetery, this ceremony. It's a special occasion for all of us. God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you.